Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell Technologies World 2018. Brought to you by Dell EMC and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of day one of Dell Technologies World. I'm Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante in Las Vegas. I'm excited to welcome back to theCUBE one of our alumni, Chandamoy Mandal, the Director of Marketing at Dell EMC. Chandamoy, nice to see you again. Happy to be here. So we had an exciting keynote this morning. Michael Dell was talking about number one in, in market share for servers and storage, expecting when the 2018 calendar numbers came out for first quarter to gain share. So what's going on with storage with all flash? So we are excited about our storage all flash portfolio. We are going to have a couple of surprising announcements tomorrow. I cannot give away all of these, but all of our portfolio is going to continue to innovate based on all the themes Michael uh, touched upon, ranging from artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, all of those things. We have a complete portfolio of all flash products covering different market segments, uh, customers, ranging from VMAX all flash, Extreme IO, Unity, SC series. So we are really excited about the pace of innovations we are doing, uh, the way we are capturing a market. So it's a great time to be in all flash storage. John DeMay, I wonder if we can talk about how we got here. So the, the first modern instantiation of, of Flash, and there were a lot of SSDs and battery backed up you know, memories in the past, but it was, uh, I think it was EMC dropped a, a, a flash drive into a Symmetrix way back when. And that changed, began to change things. But people soon realized, well, the controller architecture is not going to support that, so we need all flash architectures. And then people quickly realized, oh wow, it, it's taken us decades to build this rich you know, stack of services. So now, fast forward, you know, basically a decade plus, where are we today in terms of all flash capabilities and, and adoption? So, in the enterprises today, you see all flash getting adopted at a very high rate. In fact, of the storage that we ship, almost like 80% of it is all flash storage. And again, like we have different products for different segments. And as you mentioned, we started from like dropping SSDs into the enterprise arrays, evolving through the process. Now, if you look at us, we have modern uh, purpose-built all flash arrays like Extreme IO, and then uh, all flash arrays like VMAX all flash, and some announcements where you are going to see the maturity level over the last decade, all the data services that got brought in, and the very high performance, low latency with mission critical availability that we are able to deliver across the platform for all of our enterprise products. So flash everywhere. And then, you know, we've made the observation a lot that, and it sounds trite, but I'll, I'll, I'll put it out there anyway, is historically, when you think about storage, it was all about persisting data. And you try to make it go as fast as you could, but it's, it was mechanical. Now, with Flash, it's all about doing stuff faster, real time, low latency, massive IOPS. We're shifting the bottlenecks around. What's your take on, on, on that dynamic? So, Flash is a fast media, so having great performance is really table stake. That is not really the differentiator, so to speak, but it needs to be coupled with advanced data surfaces. You need to have very high resiliency. The customers can rely on you with five nine, six nines of availability day in and day out, as well as you need to do the business uh, solutions, transforming like IT, helping businesses transform in their digital transformation process. So let me kind of like give you some right. quick examples. Let's take Extreme IO for example. Uh, so it started out as a purpose-built, modern, leading all-flash array. And it is built upon an unique architecture, taking the advantage of, of flash media. So it is content-aware, metadata-centric, active-active uh, controller architecture that helps us deliver very high performance, hundreds of thousands to millions of IOPS with very low, consistent latency. No matter how much uh, you have written to the array, what workloads you are running, what are the uh, system load, et cetera. But again, 
that's the first layer. The second layer of it is the advanced uh, data surfaces, always on inline uh, reducing the data space. So for example, the inline deduplication, compression, and making sure we are not writing the duplicate data to the SSDs, thereby increasing the longevity of the SSD media, as well as reducing the capacity footprint and uh, driving down costs. Speaking of that, you uh, kind of like wrap it around into a very simple modern UI that's very easy to manage, no tuning needed. So that's where today's IT could go from the tactical day-to-day -day operations to strategic innovations, how they can do the IT transformation, get into the digital transformation so that they're ahead of their competition, not only today, but for tomorrow. And, and, and the content awareness and the metadata centricity are what you just explained, is that right? Can you connect those? Uh, sure. So, suppose when the data is being written, right, uh, it might have duplicate data. Now, typical, say for example, you are running a VDI environment, right? So for your like tens of thousands of users, everybody has their Windows VM, probably like the same data across all the laptops, right? Now, when you look at it, uh, in the XtremeIO metadata-centric, always in-memory architecture, the request comes in, you try to look it up. Now, when you need to do that, your metadata is always in-memory, and you are doing data reduction based on an unique fingerprinting algorithm, checking in whether you have seen the data before. So if you haven't seen the data before, then only you write it, doing other data services on top of it. But if you have seen the data before, then you just update the metadata in memory and acknowledge the write. You get a very fast write performance that is actually at memory speed, not even at the SSD speed. So this metadata-centric architecture that has all the metadata all the time in memory helps you accelerate the process, especially in the case where a lot of duplicate data is present. It's a memory speeds because you've somehow eliminated an I.O., or is that NVMe, or, or? So, when you access data, right, an application says, I want to access block X, Y, Z. So any controller will need to have the metadata for it, right. and then based on the metadata, it needs to do the access. It's like when you go to a library, you want to find a book from a bookshelf. First, you need to know the control number, and then based on the control number, like which shelf, which rack, you go and fetch it. Storage controllers of every type works in the same way. Now, if you cannot have your metadata in memory, then the first step the controller has to do is go down to the array, fetch the metadata, and then based on the metadata, you fetch the data and serve the I/O request. Now, if you have the metadata always in memory, then that step is always eliminated. You, you can guarantee that your metadata is there, and all you need to do is look up and serve the I/O request. That's the key of delivering consistent performance. Okay, in other areas, if the metadata is not in memory, you will not get that consistency. But here, we can deliver day in and day out, 90% full or 10% full, whether it's OLTP or VDI, that high performance with very minimal latency. That's the key here. So high performance, low latency. You've given us some, some really good overview into the potential that the technology can make to help IT innovate, and as Michael Dell even said this morning, that you know, IT innovation is key. IT can be a, become a profit center of an organization, really uh, as a catalyst for digital transformation. Talk to us about some of the business benefits that if a business is really wrapping their head around IT as a profit center and as a driver of business strategy, what are some of the business benefits that all flash array can deliver to an organization. Any examples come to mind? Yes, I will answer your question with one of the customer examples. So let's see how they have been doing it. And it's my favorite example of Boston Red Sox. I am from the Boston area. <laughs> You're a it, fan, right? Absolutely. All, right. All the Boston uh, sports team. <laughs> now, when uh, Boston Red Sox uh, was there in the digital transformation journey, now they had to transform a lot of things. First of all, the uh, experiences of the spectators like us who are in the field living to the moment, like whether it's the uh, jumbotrons or like uh, getting the experience digitally on the uh, smartphones. So that's one aspect. 
The other aspect is there are a lot of analytics on all the players across MLB to get the competitive advantage in terms of which pitcher, which batter, like who has like what uh, capabilities or deficiencies so that they can go after the right player or like when they are against them, how to take advantage of that. And then they run a lot of the uh, business applications in a virtualized environment. So as you look, ranging from better spectator experience, ranging to uh, the coaches getting competitive advantage from uh, the opposing players or the scouting department, and running the general back office applications like Exchange and like Oracle, whatever need might be. Now they were able to consolidate all of those things into the Extreme IO All Flash Array platform. And the ability to deliver this performance as well as like getting a data reduction of almost like seven is to one was a key for Red Sox digital transformation journey. So the business impact to Lisa's point is lower cost obviously, uh, simpler management, but also faster time to result, or how did they use, turn that into a competitive advantage? So, if they could run, say, those analytics previously used to take like 10 hours, mm. now they can do it in two hours. So that's like an 80% faster turnaround time, right? Yeah. Previously, like if they could support like 10,000 uh, spectators on one particular like wireless network, now they have like 80,000, so it's the experience that's uh, transformative for the uh, folks like who are enjoying the game. It's the like uh, number of applications they are running. It's how they are running, and they are viewing IT as a strategic investment as opposed to something that's needed to run the operations. Well, you know, baseball games are like five hours now because you could even do it in game <laughs> at, that, <laughs> at that speed. How about the data services? When Flash first came out all flash architectures, they were um, not very rich in terms of data services. Uh, that's evolved, I mean, the industry in general, and Dell EMC specifically, has put a lot of effort into that. So maybe you could describe some of the data, what do we mean by data services? We're talking about copy services, migration services, snapshotting, et cetera. What are the important ones that we should know about? So, uh, the, the important data services are like thin provisioning, the data reduction technologies like deduplication, compression, uh, then you have your data protection in forms of like various uh, types of RAID technologies. The most important one I'll put out as like what you, I mean how mature your uh, snapshot surfaces, as well as what you can do for your uh, data protection, business continuity, disaster recovery. Those are very critical for any businesses that needs to rely upon like having their systems up and running 365 uh, days or uh, 24 seven. So having those type of uh, data services is a key and not only having, but also like having a maturity. For example, taking VMAX All Flash in this particular case, right? It's built upon of like two decades of reliability where SRDF is the gold standard in industry in terms of uh, resiliency, right, six nines of availability. So those, somebody coming up with a brand new array like on day one cannot have it. We have seen that evolution with folks who originally had very fast uh, storage, but then like there was no data services, right? So it's the evolution of having the performance as well as the right data services. That helps the customer transform their journey both in terms of modernizing the IT infrastructure as well as having the digital transformation to be competitive today and tomorrow. And the positioning of Extreme IO, just to clarify for, for our audience, because you got all you know, got all flash VMAX, you got Extreme IO, it's really it's 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 the high end of the mid-range. Is that how we should we should think about that? So, so we have a lot of uh, I mean, like, as you said, like VMAX, All Flash, Extreme IO, they are all important in. Uh, effectively, like, we have the portfolio because with one product, you cannot serve each and every customer needs. So, picking on your very specific example, right? Extreme IO is great for mixed workload consolidation, virtualized applications, VDI, as well as situations where you have 
lots of copies. Okay, so for example, you have a database, you need to create test and dev copies, you have copies for your uh, backup, sandboxing. So in these type of scenarios, Xtrema is extremely good and kind of like is the sweet spot. And we are going to, uh, we are having extreme, new Xtrema X bricks that are even lower priced a point than the previous generation. It's literally 55% uh, better uh, price entry point. So now, this enterprise class capabilities of Xtreme.io will be also available in the mid-market at the mid-range price. Well, my thanks so much for stopping by and not only expanding on the customer awards that we saw this morning by sharing with us the impact that the Boston Red Sox were making, but also sharing with us what's new with Xtreme.io and All Flash. Thank you. And sitting big, between two Bostonians. Big night tonight. We got Bruins, we got Celtics. Red Sox take a back seat for a while, but they'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> we want to thank you for watching theCUBE. We are live at day one of Dell Technologies World. I'm Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante. Thanks for watching. Stick around, we'll be right back after a short break.